Some of them look up to you and they'll follow you, not me. You throw in with me and we saw up the block. The casting process for Riot and Cell Block 11 brought together a group of talented actors who would help make this movie a classic. The film's director, Don Siegel, was known for his ability to choose the right actors for his projects. For the lead role of James Vanning, Siegel chose Neville Brand, a veteran actor who had already made a name for himself in Hollywood. Brand's tough guy image and intense acting style were a perfect fit for the role of a prison reform advocate who finds himself caught up in a prison riot. The role of Commissioner Haskell was given to Emil Meyer, a seasoned character actor who had appeared in numerous films and television shows. Meyer's imposing presence and authoritative demeanor made him an ideal choice for the role of the prison warden. To play the role of the prison chaplain, Alvy Moore, Siegel cast a relatively unknown actor who had only appeared in a few small roles prior to Riot in Cell Block 11. Moore's performance in the film helped to establish him as a talented actor, and he would go on to have a successful career in both film and television. The casting of the supporting roles was also carefully considered. Each actor was chosen for their ability to bring depth and complexity to their characters, even in small roles. The result was a talented ensemble cast that helped to make Riot and Cell Block 11 a classic of the prison film genre. In the end, the casting of Riot and Cell Block 11 was a testament to Don Siegel's skill as a director and his ability to choose the right actors for his projects. The film's success can be attributed in large part to the talented cast that Siegel assembled, each of whom brought their own unique talents and abilities to the project. Our participants of this revolt, that is all. Delving into the creation of 1954's Riot and Cell Block 11, Director Don Siegel brought a unique vision to life. Known for his gritty, realistic style, Siegel drew inspiration from real-life events and the documentary-style filmmaking of the era. Collaborating closely with cinematographer George F. Clifford, Siegel employed handheld cameras and natural lighting to craft a raw, authentic atmosphere. This approach lent the film a sense of urgency and tension, immersing viewers in the claustrophobic world of the prison. Siegel's directorial style was also characterized by his commitment to collaboration. He maintained an open dialogue with his cast and crew, encouraging their input and fostering a creative environment. This collaborative spirit was evident in the film's powerful performances, particularly from leads Neville Brand and Emil Meyer. Siegel's vision for Riot and Cell Block 11 was not only to create a gripping drama, but also to shed light on the harsh realities of the American prison system. By focusing on the human stories within the institution, Siegel crafted a film that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the genre. Let's talk about the 1954 movie, Riot in Cell Block 11. This classic film offers a gripping portrayal of prison life with a unique blend of humor, shock, and sadness. One standout actor in this movie is Neville Brand, who played the role of James V. Dunn, his portrayal of a tough, yet vulnerable inmate was both captivating and thought-provoking. As for my personal connection to the film, Riot in Cell Block 11 has inspired me to delve deeper into the complexities of the criminal justice system. It's a stark reminder of the challenges and injustices that many incarcerated individuals face. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below and stay tuned for some fascinating facts about this classic film. In the early 1950s, filmmaker Don Siegel began planning a low-budget crime drama. This movie would later become known as Riot in Cell Block 11. To create the required prison setting, the crew transformed an old National Guard armory located in Downey, California into a makeshift film studio. They built several cell blocks, a warden's office, and other necessary facilities to shoot the scenes convincingly. The film's art department designed each detail meticulously, ensuring every prop matched those used in real prisons. Even the uniforms worn by actors were carefully chosen to represent accurate attire for correctional officers and prisoners of the time period. However, working on such limited resources presented its own share of challenges. Space constraints often forced the team to get creative with camera angles and staging to achieve their desired shots. One notable aspect of Riot in Cell Block 11 was how it pushed boundaries in depicting violence and gritty realism compared to contemporary films. 
Instead of relying heavily on special effects, which were still developing technology back then, they opted for practical methods. For instance, they utilized pyrotechnics for simulating fires and explosions safely within the confined sets. Additionally, fight choreography aimed to look raw and unpolished to heighten the sense of tension and authenticity sought after by Siegel. Despite these hurdles, Riot in Cell Block 11 became renowned for its groundbreaking approach towards realistic portrayals of prison life. Its influence could be seen echoing through many future productions dealing with similar themes, leaving behind a lasting legacy in both technique and content. <laughs> In the 1950s, a wave of realism swept through American cinema, giving birth to a new genre known as social problem films. One such film that left a lasting impact was Riot in Cell Block 11. This movie, directed by Don Siegel, delved into the harsh realities of the American prison system, exposing the audience to the grim living conditions and the volatile tensions between inmates and guards. The film's protagonist, James Dunn, played by Neville Brand, is a convicted armed robber who finds himself in the midst of a prison riot. Dunn, who was once a respected guard, is now an inmate, and his perspective offers a unique insight into the dynamics of power and control within the prison walls. Riot in Cell Block 11 was not just a film, it was a call to action. The movie was based on a series of actual prison riots that had taken place in California in the early 1950s. The film's producers, Walter Wenger and Mark Hellinger, aimed to bring attention to the appalling conditions in American prisons and the urgent need for reform. The film's stark realism was achieved through a combination of locations shooting at Folsom Prison and the use of actual inmates as extras. This lent an air of authenticity to the film, making the audience feel as if they were witnessing the events unfold in real time. Riot in Cell Block 11 was not just a film about prison riots, it was a film about power, corruption, and the human condition. It explored the complex relationships between inmates and guards, the abuse of power, and the dehumanizing effects of incarceration. The film did not shy away from the harsh realities of prison life, but it also offered a glimmer of hope, suggesting that through understanding and reform, change was possible. In conclusion, Riot in Cell Block 11 is a powerful and thought-provoking film that offers a stark portrayal of the American prison system. It is a film that does not shy away from the harsh realities of prison life, but instead shines a light on the urgent need for reform. Whether you are a fan of classic films or a student of criminal justice, Riot in Cell Block 11 is a film that deserves your attention. Sure, Warden. In the 1950s, Hollywood experienced a shift in the way films approached their musical scores. This change was evident in the 1954 movie, Riot in Cell Block 11. The film score, composed by Paul Sautel and Burt Schefter, was a significant departure from traditional Hollywood music. Instead of grand orchestral pieces, they opted for a more minimalist and modernist approach, using electronic instruments to create a tense and uneasy atmosphere. Paul Sautel and Burt Schefter were already established composers in the film industry, but Riot and Cell Block 11 marked a new direction for them. They used an early form of the synthesizer, the Andes Martino, to create the score. This instrument, with its eerie and haunting sound, perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the movie. The composer stated in an interview that they wanted to create a score that would reflect the harsh reality of the prison system and the imminent danger present in the film. The electronic score added a layer of tension and anxiety, making the audience feel as if they were part of the riot. The soundtrack also included degetic music, such as the blues song Chill will perform by Johnny Lee Wills. This song was used to contrast the harshness of prison life with the outside world, adding a touch of melancholy and nostalgia. The combination of the electronic score and diegetic music in Riot and Cell Block 11 was a groundbreaking move. It not only complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the film, but also added a new dimension to the cinematic experience. This innovative approach to film scoring influenced many future composers and directors, making Riot and Cell Block 11 a classic in the realm of film music. What's the matter, Snake? Don't think I like you, huh? You're wrong. I'm gonna do your- In the 1954 film Riot and Cell Block 11, Dabs Greer played a character connected to Death Row, a role he would reprise in I Wanna Live and The Green Mile. Don Kiefer, who also appeared in Riot and Cell Block 11, 
continued acting until his wife's death, with his final credited role in Liar Liar. Neville Brand, known for his menacing portrayals, gained notoriety for his depiction of Al Capone in The Untouchables and the George Raff story. Around the same time, Rod Steiger took on the role of Capone in the film Al Capone. These actors, through their powerful performances, helped shape the narrative of this classic film. In the 1954 movie Riot in Cell Block 11, one of the most iconic scenes is the opening sequence, where a real-life prison riot in California serves as the basis for the film's story. The director, Don Siegel, brilliantly interweaves actual newsreel footage with stage scenes, creating an intense sense of immediacy and realism. The use of handheld cameras and location shooting at Folsom Prison further enhances the gritty, authentic feel of this sequence. Another unforgettable scene occurs when the prisoners, led by protagonist James Dunn, take control of the cell block. The tension is palpable as the inmates, fueled by their pent-up anger and frustration, confront the guards. Brand's powerful performance captures the complex mix of emotions experienced by Dunn, who is both a ruthless leader and a man desperate for change in the corrupt prison system. The cinematography in this scene is noteworthy, with stark lighting and tight framing emphasizing the claustrophobic atmosphere within the cell block. The camera often places the audience in the midst of the action, creating a sense of intimacy and urgency. As Siegel explained in an interview, I wanted the audience to feel like they were right there, in the middle of the riot, experiencing everything the characters were going through. The film's impact on audiences is evident in its enduring legacy as a classic of the prison genre. Its unflinching portrayal of the harsh realities of prison life, combined with its exploration of social issues such as overcrowding and corruption, resonated with contemporary viewers and continues to do so today. As Brand remarked in a 1974 interview, people still come up to me and talk about Riot and Cell Block 11. It's a film that's touched a nerve and stayed with people. This classic's influence extends beyond its entertainment value as it served as a catalyst for prison reform in the United States. The film's graphic depiction of the brutal conditions within American prisons helped to raise public awareness of these issues and spurred calls for change. As Siegel noted, we didn't set out to make a message movie, but if Riot and Cell Block 11 helped to bring about positive change, then I'm proud of that. I'll be here at 7.30. Fine. In his early years, Neville Brand worked various jobs including being a bootblack, waiter, and soda jerk before turning to acting. One notable performance was in Riot and Cell Block 11. Meanwhile, William Schaller may not always get recognized for his work in Riot and Cell Block 11, but he remains popular among fans for playing Nils Barris in the Star Trek episode The Trouble with Tribbles. On the other hand, Paul Fries had a unique job behind the scenes. He frequently redid lines for actors who spoke English poorly or needed help with their accent. His dubbing could cover just one line or even whole roles. Released in 1954, Riot and Cell Block 11 made a significant splash in American cinema. This powerful film exposed the harsh realities of prison life, striking a chord with audiences seeking raw authenticity. Its unapologetic portrayal of violence and corruption behind bars sparked intense debates among viewers and critics alike. The movie revolves around actual events occurring in California prisons during the early 1950s, lending it credibility and relatability. Audiences were drawn into the gripping tale of rebellion against an oppressive system, which many saw as reflective of larger societal issues beyond just penal institutions. Riot and Cell Block 11 also served as a catalyst for change in both cinematic storytelling and public discourse regarding criminal justice reform. Before this film, prison dramas typically focused on tales of individual redemption or heroism amidst chaos. However, this production dared to delve deeper, exposing systematic flaws and prompting conversations about necessary improvements within correctional facilities. Moreover, the movie's influence extended beyond its initial release leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. Elements of the plot, characterizations, and thematic elements can be traced through numerous subsequent films, television shows, books, and other media exploring similar topics. In essence, Riot and Cell Block 11 paved the way for more nuanced explorations of crime, punishment, and power dynamics. Despite being nearly seven decades old, 
riot in cell block 11 remains pertinent today due to ongoing dialogues surrounding mass incarceration, racial bias, and humane treatment within penitentiaries. Thus, while initially shocking and controversial, this groundbreaking film has proven itself a vital piece of our collective narrative, continually contributing to essential discussions on pressing social concerns. In the 1954 film Riot in Cell Block 11, Alvy Moore, who served in the U.S. Marine Corps during World War II and fought in the Battle of Iwo Jima, played a significant role. It's worth noting that the production code was in full force during the production of this movie in 1953-54, which prohibited any direct references to homosexuality. As a result, the dialogue subtly refers to keeping young inmates away from certain prisoners. Paul Fries, another actor in the film, is known for dubbing the feminine Josephine voice for Tony Curtis in Some Like It Hot. His talent for voice acting added depth to his character in Riot and Cell Block 11, making it all the more memorable for audiences. Warden, Bacon's dead. Riot and Cell Block 11, a 1954 movie, received critical acclaim for its realistic portrayal of prison life. The film was directed by Don Siegel and produced by Walter Wanger. The New York Times praised the movie, calling it a tough, brutal, shocking, and relentlessly exciting piece of work. The review highlighted the film's documentary-style approach, which added to its authenticity. Audiences were also captivated by the film's gritty realism. It was a box office success, grossing over one million in its first year. The movie received two award nominations. The British Film Academy nominated it for Best Film from Any Source, and the Directors Guild of America nominated Don Siegel for Outstanding Directorial Achievement in Motion Pictures. These accolades are a testament to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew. The film's success helped to establish Don Siegel as a leading director and Walter Wanger as a respected producer. The movie's impact extends beyond its awards and box office success. It is now considered a classic of the prison genre influencing many subsequent films, its exploration of prison reform, and the treatment of inmates remains relevant today. In conclusion, Riot in Cell Block 11 was a groundbreaking film that left a lasting impact on the industry and continues to resonate with audiences. Prisons of over 1,500 men are unmanageable. This prison was built to house 4,000 men. Cost in the 1954 movie Riot in Cell Block 11, Actor William Schallert made an appearance before featuring in the original Twilight Zone TV series, its 1985 revival, and Twilight Zone the movie. Interestingly, Madge Cleveland made her debut in this classic film. On the other hand, Alvy Moore, who also starred in this movie, met his future spouse while studying at the Pasadena Playhouse. Despite having different surname spellings, they shared a mailbox due to their identical last names. These fascinating behind-the-scenes details add depth to the viewing experience of this powerful film. And indeed, Schaller, Cleveland, and Moore each continued to make their mark in various acting roles beyond this early cinematic collaboration. Yeah, the headlines say I won. Yeah, well, don't expect any medals. In the heat of production, this classic, Riot and Cell Block 11, faced a significant challenge. The set of the prison's cell block was not designed to accommodate the complex camera movements required for the riot scenes. To overcome this hurdle, the ingenious crew decided to dismantle a portion of the set and rebuild it outdoors. This allowed them the necessary space for the intricate camera work, capturing the raw intensity of the riot scenes. During the filming of intense scenes, the cast truly embraced their roles. Actor Neville Brand, who played the ruthless inmate Machine Gun Jackson, often stayed in character even when the cameras weren't rolling. His immersive performance led to a few tense moments on set, but it also contributed to the film's authentic and gripping atmosphere. Another fascinating anecdote involves the film's director, Don Siegel. Known for his meticulous preparation, Siegel would often storyboard his scenes in great detail. However, for the climactic riot scene, he decided to abandon his storyboards. Instead, he chose to capture the chaos and tension organically, directing his cast and crew in real time. This bold decision added a layer of authenticity to the scene, making it even more compelling. Lastly, it's worth noting that Riot in Cell Block 11 was one of the first films to tackle the issue of prison reform. The film's producer, Walter Wanger, had first-hand experience with the prison system, having served time himself. This personal connection drove the film's authenticity, 
and its powerful message, making it a standout even today. I got four guys on the front gate. Two. In the 1954 movie Riot in Cell Block 11, Paul Fries played a significant role. Fries, who attended the Schoenart Art Institute under the GI Bill, had to drop out due to his first wife's failing health, forcing him to return to radio work. His filmography includes eight films in the National Film Registry, such as Some Like It Hot and Mary Poppins. William Schaller, another actor in Riot and Cell Block 11, gained recognition for his role as Martin Lane in The Patty Duke Show, ranking number 39 in TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest TV dads of all time. Schallert's career spanned various genres, earning him a place in classic television and film history. In this classic, both Freeze and Schallert showcase their talents, contributing to the movie's cultural, historical, and aesthetic significance. The film remains an important piece of cinema, resonating with audiences, and leaving a lasting impact on the world of entertainment. How does that work? Here, let me your neck a minute. Oh. <laughs> Riot in Cell Block 11, released in 1954, is a movie that left a significant mark on film history. This classic tackled the issue of prison reform, a topic not commonly explored in cinema at the time. The film's gritty realism, thanks to its semi-documentary style, set it apart from other prison films. The movie's director, Don Siegel, was known for his innovative approach to filmmaking. He used real prison locations and actual inmates as extras, adding to the film's authenticity. This approach influenced future filmmakers who began to favor realism over stage sets. Riot in Cell Block 11 also had a profound impact on the genre of prison films. It inspired a wave of realistic prison dramas that focused on social issues such as the corruptive influence of power and the need for reform. This shift in focus moved the genre away from the sensationalized portrayals of prison life seen in earlier films. The film's influence extended beyond cinema. It is said to have influenced the reform of the U.S. prison system. The movie's graphic depiction of prison conditions and its call for reform sparked public debate, leading to changes in prison policies and practices. In terms of subsequent works, Riot and Cell Block 11 has been cited as an influence by several filmmakers. Its blend of realism and social commentary can be seen in films like Cool Hand Luke and The Shawshank Redemption. This classic continues to resonate with audiences today a testament to its enduring appeal and relevance. Its influence on filmmaking and its impact on public discourse serve as a lasting legacy. In the 1954 film Riot in Cell Block 11, two notable actors, William Schaller and Neville Brand, showcased their talents. Schaller, who lived in Pacific Palisades on Ramos Place, was the voice of Oscar Mayer in TV commercials and a skilled voiceover announcer for various products. Meanwhile, Bran was known for his menacing roles, including killing off Elvis Presley in the King's first film, Love Me Tender. Interestingly, Schallert's Pacific Palisades home was located near Mel Blanc and Walter Matthau's Toyopa Drive residences. The film Riot in Cell Block 11 is a classic example of the impressive work done by these two actors during their careers. Their contributions to the movie have left a lasting impact on audiences and continue to be cherished. Governor, I don't want you to take the responsibility for the murder of nine. In the film Riot in Cell Block 11, Frank Phelan takes on a different role than his usual taxi driver appearances in the Palm Beach story, and it's a wonderful life. Here, he plays a menacing character, Warden Reynolds, who hires a hitman, played by Alan Ladd in Whispering Smith. Phelan's memorable performance includes wearing a white wig as the ill-fated hitman. Another actor in Riot and Cell Block 11, William Phipps, has an interesting background. He shares his experiences in Tom Weaver's books Attack of the Monster Movie Makers and A Sci-Fi Swarm and Horror Horde. Phipps' career spans various genres, from science fiction to horror, making him a versatile actor in the industry. Boys fuss so much over letters. If I could only let her know that I'm all right. They've got wives too. <laughs> Did Riot and Cell Block 11 leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories, share your personal experiences and memories related to this classic film. How did it affect you or influence your view of cinema? Perhaps you were captivated by the intense performances, or maybe the gritty portrayal of prison life resonated with you. Whatever your connection to this powerful movie, we want to know. Don't forget to engage with us by liking, 
and sharing this post, and consider subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Let's start a conversation about this influential film and its impact on our lives. Yeah.